What's going on guys? Before we get into this video, I got something pretty cool to tell you guys. We're going to be doing another giveaway. Guess who's on board? That's right. Rurock Helmets. We're going to be giving away one Atlas 4.0 carbon helmet. You guys know I rock the liquid carbon Atlas 4.0 for Mad Max. You guys are always asking about that with the chrome windshield. Also with the Shockwave Bluetooth system, as well as the Atlas 4.0 Track Edition helmet that I rock on the Hayabusa, we're also going to be giving away one amazing flannel, which is Kevlar lined by Beyond Riders. So I'm pleased to announce this. Uh, I hope some other people get on board and we're probably going to be adding some more products. All you got to do is head on over to my website, www.cycle-fanatics.com. Every sticker you purchase will be one entry into the giveaway. I'll be announcing the winner October 31st telling you i'm so annoyed like you can't even believe it i'm so mad at myself for not remembering where i just learned this i learned this like a couple weeks ago i don't know whether it was on our trip to maine maybe when we stopped to talk to a couple people that were on bikes or at the harley davidson dealership or was it before we left i i really don't remember where i learned this awesome thing that i'm about to show you guys i posted actually on social media and it got like so many views and i realized that like nine out of 10 or maybe even 9.9 .9 people out of 10 did not know about this. I didn't know about this. Like I didn't even hear it from the dealerships or, or even people from like repair shops or engine builders or anything like that. I forgot who I heard this from and it just, it's driving me crazy. You guys know that Mad Max has a 128 big bore kit on it it's putting out about 142 horsepower 137 foot pounds of torque and if you guys been watching the channel for quite some time for a couple years you guys know that my last bike silverback had the 130 t-man performance motor in it but before that i had a zippers 128 kit in it which i actually blew because we were actually going over to long island got stuck in some really bad traffic in the bronx like right over to George Washington Bridge. And we were just stuck on the highway. It was about 105 degrees out. Then when I came out of that traffic, we realized that there was a whole bunch of smoke coming out of the tailpipes and it wasn't looking good. And sure enough, the motor blew. The rear cylinder number two, there was a lot of damage to it. And it was due to overheating. I didn't have any fans on it. I didn't have an oil cooler fan. I didn't have love jugs on it. I didn't have any extra cooling system on the bike, which I should have had. So I know I've been mentioning this to you guys a lot as far as, you know, make sure that you keep these motors cool. And I just want you guys to know that a stock Harley Davidson isn't really going to give you problems because it's stock. It was designed to be stock. The cooling system on a stock Harley Davidson is sufficient. You never really hear of anybody having problems if they even ride in super hot temperatures or stuck in a little bit of traffic. You never really hear too much about anybody blowing motors or anything like that. I believe you should still change your oil if you do ride in a bunch of like over 100 degree days. I, I highly recommend changing the oil because the oil does break down, but you really don't hear of people having too many problems. The problem comes into play when you have a stage two, when you have a stage three, stage four, or once you start going into a lot of power, like a big board kit, whether it's a 124, 128, 130, 131, 135 or bigger, that's when you start building up massive amounts of heat and that's where you need the extra cooling. And that's why we talk a lot about it because it's, trust me, it wasn't just me. I hear it all the time. I get hundreds and hundreds of emails from people blowing their motors. I get hundreds and hundreds of emails from people having problems after they put a stage two without any extra cooling, I'm going to say, on their bike or a big board kit. I get so many emails from people all over the world saying that, hey, you know, I just blew my motor or I'm having problems with my motor because I, I ran into some traffic or I ran the bike hard in really high temperatures and it happens because when you're starting to push a lot of power out of your motor, you start building up a lot of heat and without any extra cooling, the stock 
Cooling system wasn't designed for that. And that's why we talk a lot about cooling on these things because it happened to me and I don't wanna, I tell you guys this all the time, I don't want to see you guys, you know, spending a lot of money, your hard earned money into your beautiful Harley Davidson, into a awesome engine build, and then just having it go to absolute crap because you didn't have the proper cooling components on it. So I'm gonna bring the camera in closer because what I'm about to show you isn't really, I know you guys already know what kind of cooling I have on Mad Max, but we're gonna go over for the people that don't know what I have. Like I have my garage door closed today. I'm inside in New Jersey this past week. It has been almost 100 degrees every day. The humidity here in the Northeast is insane. You can't really do anything outside. You can't, you can't even ride. It's really super uh, uncomfortable. But uh, I have no issues, trust me. I have zero worries and zero issues about running my bike in 100 degree day weather with the cooling system that I have on Mad Max. But what I'm about to tell you is super important how you're gonna be able to check if your fan works. So now on my last build on Silverback, I had a 130 T-Man performance motor. It was putting out about 155 horsepower, the thing boogied. And what I had on it was right here in the front, you're gonna see if you go and take a look at your bike, right in the front here, you have an oil cooler. And stock from factory, it does not come with a fan on it. Now, if you have a limited, that's a different story. Then you have liquid cooled heads. You have the ports that are flowing through the heads where oil goes through. We're not talking about that. We're talking, say, you know, a stock, a standard, a special. They do not come from the factory with the fan. All it comes with is your front oil cooler and that's it. And then the only other cooling component you have is basically when the bike is moving, that airflow passes through over the fins of the jugs of your cylinders and that extracts heat. So that is basically the only cooling system that you have on the bike. And that's where the problem lies is because once you change out and you go to stage two or above or big board kit, you add power, these cylinder temperatures and head temperatures increase drastically. So that's where you need extra cooling because just as stock oil cooler without anything else will never cool the bike properly. You're like definitely 100% sure that you're gonna have problems with your motor if you think you're gonna ride in like 100 degree weather, God forbid you get stopped in traffic, you're just looking for trouble. And again, it all depends how you ride as well. But even if you're more, I should, I'm gonna say a gentle rider, gentle on the throttle, you're still looking for trouble if you get stuck in traffic and it's 9,500 degrees or above out and if you have a big power motor, you're still looking for problems because then you don't have that air coming over the cylinders and cooling the motor. What I did was I have a fan. You could purchase it straight from Harley Davidson from your dealership. The fan goes behind this stock oil cooler in the front. And I'm going to tell you now that if you do purchase the fan, you could install it yourself. And it's really simple. It's just plug and play but you have to go in to take your bike to the dealership to get it flashed. It will not work unless you get it flashed from the dealership. So now I have that fan, and then before on Silverback, I used to have Love Jugs, but I decided not to go that route. What now I'm running is the Ultra Cool Oil Cooler, so I have another oil cooler, secondary oil cooler right here, and it has two fans. And then those lines are running into a housing that goes between the oil filter and the motor. And then on top of that, I also have the Ultra Cool Oil Filter. So the Ultra Cool Oil Filter cools the oil temps 10 degrees, and then the oil cooler with the two fans from Ultra Cool, it cools the oil an additional 50 degrees. So it's a total of 60 degrees. Check out my previous videos, I did some testing. I did some testing also with a laser, like an infrared, like a heat gun, and it is drastic. It's, it's definitely cooled the temps down on the bike. I could definitely notice that the bike doesn't lose that power because if the motor gets hotter, you lose horsepower. It is night and day, it's huge. So I would definitely strongly recommend if you have like a big bore kit, I would definitely get the fan on the back of the oil cooler. You could definitely get 
say love jugs, you could go with the ultra cool, but I would definitely have a minimum, at least this fan on the stock oil cooler. But me, I don't wanna take any chances. I ride a lot, I ride in all temps, all conditions, and I don't wanna get stranded, especially with a blow motor somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Which, like I said, it happened to me, but I was able to come back from Long Island, even with that blow motor, so I was lucky. Otherwise, it could, it could definitely, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. So like, this is what this video is about. If I turn on my bike and I let it idle, and it's going to take quite some time for this engine oil to reach, I believe this thermostat on the ultra cool oil cooler, I believe it tries to keep it either 260 degrees or 280 degrees. As soon as that oil temperature reaches that temp, these two fans are gonna kick on. So this is the thing. From where I'm sitting, I could hear, even if the motor is on, even with my loud Chromeworks Outlaw 2 into 1 exhaust, I could still hear these two fans kick on. If I say if I can't hear them with my helmet and loud music, whatever, I could still look down and see that they're physically running. Also, I could feel it, right? I could feel it on, on my leg. A lot of people are commenting, kind of silly comments saying, oh, yeah, but now you got all that hot air blowing over your body. It actually does not feel hot. And I and I swear to you, it doesn't feel hot in any way. It just, it feels ambient. It feels like the same temperature that's outside. So it doesn't burn my leg or anything like that. Trust me, if it was, I would be the first one to tell you and you I would be the first one to tell you I'm taking it off. There is zero issues with the ultra cool oil cooler being mounted here. I don't feel any heat on my body nor do I feel any heat on my leg. But that's the thing. See like this fan system, I know it's running and I know I won't get into any issues. But this is the problem. This fan down here because it's a, it's one fan, it's a smaller fan, it's lower. I was never able to hear the fan coming on if my motor is running and there's no way to check it. The only way to check that fan, right, is if your motor's running and you're riding or if you're idling and the fan kicks on, but it's really hard to see. You really have to like get down and look at it, but you have the shroud over it. So it's really hard to see. And it's almost impossible to hear, trust me, I've tried it. Maybe on a stock bike, if you had the fan with stock exhaust, it's a possibility you're gonna hear it. But with my bike, with all your guys' bikes, big power, big exhaust, you're never gonna hear it. So what I'm about to show you, I'm telling you, because it, I'll tell you the story afterwards what happened, but let's get into what I'm about to show you because it might, save you a whole bunch of money and it might save you a lot of headaches. So this is what you do if you have, like I said, not every bike is going to have that fan on the stock oil cooler. If you bought your bike and the dealership installed it or if you purchased that fan and installed it yourself and got it flashed and the dealer tells you it's working, don't take it for granted, don't take the chance. This is how you check it. And just so you know, I have the Krauss Wolf Pro Kit set up so I don't have the ignition switch anymore. What you guys are gonna have to do is turn your ignition switch on and then turn the power onto the bike. Ready for this? Go full throttle, listen. I got the mic right here, listen. And it stays on. That's how you check your fan down there. I was like, when somebody just, let me turn this off. So it's not gonna shut off until you kill the power to the bike. So when somebody just showed me this, I, 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 it's still driving me crazy because I, I literally was, oh my God, thank you so much. Like, I never knew this. And I, I realized that a lot of people don't know this so that's why I wanted to bring this video to you guys because this is what happened. As soon as I put the short form content on Instagram and on TikTok, it got so many views, it got so many likes because a lot of people didn't know about it. But my boy Nadell, he actually messaged me and said, as soon as I seen that, I went down to my bike and I tried it. Same thing, put the power on full throttle and hold it until the fan comes on. He said, John, my fan's not working. And he bought 
the Street Glide, which you guys love that bike, right? With the 131, it had the fan, I believe it was installed by the dealer and it should have been working. Again, he has the 131 with 150, like six horsepower and 160 foot pounds of torque. So if anybody needs that fan working, it's Nadal on that bike, right? So he said, I went down, put the power on, full throttle, nothing. I said, he was like, holy cow. I'm like, oh my God, that's good that you actually seen that short video that I put out. And it's good now that he knows because he's gonna take the bike to the dealer because it's possible that they installed it, plugged it in, but never flashed it inside the ECU. So do yourself a favor, as soon as you see this video, if you have the Harley Davidson fan mounted on your stock oil cooler, or you could purchase it also in one unit, the fan comes together with the oil cooler, but that's not necessary because it's the same oil cooler, you could just get the fan. So if you have that fan, go down to your bike or when you get home from work or wherever you are, Put the power on full throttle make sure that fan comes on and if it doesn't get it fixed or get it flashed or whatever you got to do but that's how you check it i'm going to show you again power on to the bike full throttle and the fan comes on so like if you don't have a method or a way to check it or it's kind of hard for you to look. It's kind of a pain in the ass. It could cost you a motor. It could cost you some problems, right? So like me, I even told the guys, if I'm ever going to be taking a long trip or if I'm, if I'm say down in Florida or somewhere hot or even here in New Jersey, I'm about to take a ride in the heat before I leave, check it. Because that may be the difference if like the fan's not working, maybe I'm not gonna take the bike out that day. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. So that's it for this video, guys. Check your fan, I'm telling you. We got some amazing stuff happening, man, that's coming out uh, here in the next couple weeks. So thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys liking the main series videos and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Go check that fan.